Welcome back, everyone, to Hero Hero Go Show uh, and our continuing series uh, of, of looks into the series of films uh, titled The Eye. I am uh, joined on this uh, entire campaign by the effervescent uh, Richard Glenn Schmidt. How are you, sir? I'm feeling very effluvient, so thank you. Oh, I, Glad I, to be here again. I think I have some effluvia. <laughs> effluvia. <laughs> my, see if ask your doctor if effluvia is right for you. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, we, look, we got to keep the, this on the rails at least for a minute. So, okay. what I would like to do before we begin uh, our look at this film is do a little bit of a last time on Hero Hero Go Show. Because we have we have watched the I one and two, you can check out uh, the, those episodes on the on the feed right now. Um, these are all directed thus far by uh, Danny and Oxide Peng, who are brothers, twin brothers, uh, who were born in Hong Kong. Um, they both have worked in films separately. Um, uh, Oxide Ping generally worked as a colorist before, uh, they, they started directing films. Uh, Danny Ping was working as an editor for a while. Uh, a lot of, a lot of work on the Thailand film scene from both of them. And, and in fact, Richard, it was 1999's Bangkok Dangerous that they came together to direct for the first time on, uh, which you may recall, uh, was later remade as Bangkok Dangerous with Nicolas Cage. Well, yes. Also directed by the Pang Brothers, they they uh, remade their own film. So, I'm trying so hard to remember if I've seen either the uh, the OG or the Nick G Nick G <laughs> Nicholas Gage. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've seen those. Charlie's Angels, directed by Nick G. <laughs> now that I've seen, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like I've seen the original Bangkok dangerous forever ago. I mean, not that it made a giant difference. The, the thing that was touted at the time was, uh, the editing, you know, this was kind of that John Woo era where a lot of like crime films were coming out of Hong Kong. And this, you know, Bangkok dangerous was kind of in that, in that mix, much like the eye, which they they would direct in 2002, a, a couple of years after uh, Bangkok Dangerous. The Eye was kind of riding that, you know, J-horror wave as well. Oh, yeah. And um, in between, uh, they, they both made their own crime movies. Like, they, they went off and did separate films. And Oxide Ping did a segment for a horror anthology called Bangkok Haunted. And uh, then they ended up coming back together for the I-2. And then a couple of years after that, they returned to the franchise for the I-3, which was released in March of 2005. And uh, this movie, uh, a little bit of a diminishing returns on this one. Uh, Not creatively, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, financially speaking, this was not... Certainly not as big as the I, and uh, I don't believe it was as successful as the I too. So, you know, and and maybe, <laughs> maybe what we're going to discuss is is the reason for that. <laughs> I mean, I just hope that they did that thing where they're like, okay, what was the budget of the last one? Okay, cut that in half. All right, what was the budget of the last one? Okay, cut that in half. You know, and because this um. I could see why this didn't make a splash other than the stinky water when someone pees on a tree. Yeah. And a ghost kid is like, Hey, back, <laughs> back off with the golden showers, brother. Uh, it's yeah. This movie is it's we'll get into it here, but yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting to kind of, uh, to chart the the path of these movies where the first one is very serious. You know, it's a, a, a dramatic film um yeah. and and i would argue that clearly the best of the lot and then the second film is uh you know a little goofier with all the reincarnation stuff you know we we talked about it on the 
the previous episode, but that line of, you know, I'm pregnant with your wife, you know, or your wife wants to be my unborn <laughs> child or whatever, however she phrases it. It's just nonsense language strung together. And so it was kind of weird and funny and dopey. Uh, and it had some good creepy moments. It's not a great movie, but it had some moments. Yeah. And then for the third one, it's clear that the Payne brothers were like, what if we just made every sequel all at once? <laughs> we have a pamphlet, not a pamphlet, a, uh, a big old notebook. I don't know why pamphlet was in there. They have a big old notebook full of sequel ideas. And now they have like no ideas because like you said, they just stuffed them all into this one freaking movie. This is an anthology film. It really, yes, it very much is. It was called alternately the i infinity and the i10 uh and the i10 for the the 10 uh ways that you can see a ghost but also it's like well it's kind of the c it's kind of the i three through ten yes um and and then towards the end of the movie they try to make it all kind of hang together with uh some crazy story about uh you know people getting lost in the spirit world in the further um oh brother which this in fairness this this predated insidious so if anyone was ripping off anybody insidious ripped off the i3 which i like to believe is how it went down (laughs) but james wan uh, was watching the i3 and he was like you know this is mostly garbage but there's something about them just waking up and wandering around an empty set that i like He's like, man, I'm going to get my Bangkok dangerous lawyer on you guys. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a real, uh, a real something. But well, all right, so let's get into this movie, which is, opens with kind of the tone setter of the film, which is this kind of exorcism <laughs> ritual where it's a bunch of like Buddhist monks all surrounding <clears throat> This woman who is floating in midair, they're chanting and 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 trying to get her, you know, unpossessed and whatnot. And then, Richard, out comes her tongue. Oh boy! And just this, uh... <laughs> just starts licking all these dudes and whopping them in the head. And like mm. one guy tries to protect himself, and the tongue hits him from underneath. And then when he <laughs> grabs his chin, it hits him in the forehead. I mean, it, it's it's fucking three stooges with this tongue. I this is the moment where I was really glad I went into this completely cold. I knew nothing. I knew less about this film than the first two going in. So that tongue coming out. I mean, you could have picked me up off the floor. I was like, what? Because I love me some freaking Hong Kong comedy. Yeah, the the moment it happens. And that's one of the big problems, I think, with this movie. Is that the moment that happens, you're like, what in the fuck is this? Yep. And it that that kind of atonality hits a lot in this film. But we'll we'll again we we will address it as it comes, but there's so after this opening, we're introduced to our hero, our, our ne'er do well heroes of the movie in one of the most '90s ass Sugar Ray openings. <laughs> like I know this movie came oh, out in 2005, God. but it is just oh it, boy, it looks like the opening to any MTV reality series. Yep, this is this is their strangely professionally shot uh, vacation footage. These these kids are on vacation. And yeah, they get title cards. Each one gets a title card, like April, May, Ted. Like I'm like, dude, this is so cute. I I, <laughs> I both love and hate the fact that the girls in this movie are named April and May. April and May. <laughs> you know, on the one hand, easy for me to remember. On on the other hand, ugh, just it's another stop it. another winning joke. Another like slam bang slam dunk if you will slam bangkok dangerous fucking joke it's one you're right one of the problems i think is that this is just the broadest kind of comedy 
and it's a very like it feels like it was meant to appeal to a western audience but it's a very you know it, it it's like a removed look at here's what we think american audiences will laugh at oh god and and just missing that target by a mile um this was a year worth pointing out this is the year after Shaun of the dead right and so i think there are actual moments in this movie that are 100 percent inspired by the success of Shaun of the dead and i think a <laughs> lot of the comedy in this is like oh horror comedies are big right now so let's do one of those i don't know i think this is from a sincere place in their heart <laughs> yeah, no, that's the other thing, is this movie feels cynical in a way. Yeah. Like, the second one kind of did, of, like, they felt like they needed to make a sequel. This yeah. feels like, like you said, this is just a notebook of random shit that they had written down and decided to string together. And some of it works, but it none of it hangs together, but some of it kind of works individually. Um, there's one sequence in particular that I think is pretty good that we'll, that we'll get to, but, um, so the, right. Like they're, uh, it, it's the, this group of tourists, uh, they, uh, as they are hitting Thailand, they, um, they end up passing an accident on the road at which point the vehicle slows down and you see, this girl get into the the truck with him and then it pulls away and and one of the the guys teddy uh is one of the lunkheads teddy uh is like hey she's a pretty lady and kind of takes note of her and, and and videotapes her um but then uh as soon as they arrive at their destination he kind of turns around she's gone sort of thing i there i call them the fun time bunch this crew Right, they look like they should be solving wacky mysteries. You know, there there's one guy. His name is uh, Chong Kwai, but I just called him Hairdo for the whole movie. It's Teddy and Hairdo, yeah, because he's got a Michael Landon esque kind of mane of hair uh, that is impressive. And so, anyway, they pass this the this accident. They end up uh, at uh, Hairdo's mom's place in thailand and um they're telling scary stories and this is where the anthology stuff really kicks in and i kind of wish this had been the whole movie is them right. just telling ghost stories to one another like a campfire yeah, tales kind of thing would have yeah. totally would have been a better movie uh and like it, it gives you an excuse to do all these individual gags and and that kind of thing um in instead of the again very broad ending that that we end up with but um so like there's uh, a ghost story about a dude uh c like coming up to a new seller saying that this old woman needs help but there's somebody else on the guy's back that's in a like it's a doll or something and uh and that one's kind of fine then there's a girl uh, a story about a girl who sees um a ghost battalion of japanese soldiers which yes. is that which is pretty cool and you know for longtime listeners of this program nazis are i'm sorry uh the japanese are just the nazis of the pacific like anytime right. you're talking about war atrocities japan is at the bottom of it nope. uh, and uh it's just hey look no no judgment that's just how it rolled in world war ii i'm, so, I'm glad america never did anything you know, look, there's you can do some whataboutism, but Japan <laughs> in World War II was fucking <sighs> heinous. They were professionals. They they were creative was the yeah. problem. And anyway, so she sees the not uh, the the Japanese ghost and that's kind of scary. And then it's Hairdo who's like, "Hey, check this story out. I found this book that tells you how to contact the dead at this bookshop. Oh yeah. And then that night I went to bed and there was this terrible storm and I didn't heed the advice of the bookseller who told me never, ever 
look at the back page of of this book or a terrible curse will befall you and uh the wind opens the book to the last page and hairdo unable to resist looks at what is written there and it turns out it's the price stamped in the book and he overpaid (laughs) which is a great gag i wish all of the jokes were this funny yes i love this joke i have never seen this joke ever it was really great it's right it is it's yeah it, it may be the best thing in the movie um there's there's one other scene that i i quite like but um but Hairdo, when they cut back to him, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the book is legit, though. And in fact, there are two cases that I can cite to back up my claim that this book will help you see a ghost. And uh, and so the, this is kind of what the movie becomes if for uh, at least this portion of it, which is here's how you contact a ghost and he- let's go do that. And so it's. Number one is be the movie The Eye One. Yeah. Uh get a corneal transplant, apparently. <laughs> in this ancient text. Um then the other way is to be the eye two. Where you're a pregnant lady who also committed suicide or tried to commit suicide. Right. Uh then well, we Yeah, the pregnant pregnant suicidal pregnant lady with a corneal transplant done. Got it. Yes. So that's the those are ways number one and two. The third way you can see a ghost is to look through your legs, like bend bend down and look through your legs. Um, the fourth one, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I try to do some research to 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 verify whether or not this is an actual, you know, like Thai or or Hong Kong kind of uh, folklore or superstition. Uh, this all seems made up as hell. So, of course, I, you of know, course. just I, I want to just say for the record, I try to do due diligence. If I have that wrong, bo at legionpodcasts.com, uh, cite your sources and, and correct me. Yeah, but, we, we need to hear about that. Yes, I would love to hear what the actual list of ways to uh, see a ghost are. Would I try one? Probably, probably. Um, so you look through your legs. Uh, you, number four is comb your hair at midnight and look in a mirror and you'll see the, the ghost that you are, are trying to see. Um, the fifth one is my favorite, which is rubbing grave dirt on your eyes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, number six, this one seems a little too commonplace. This one is opening up an umbrella indoors. And that just seems to happen way too often for that to be a real thing. Yeah, I've, I must have had so many encounters because that's I, it's not a hobby of mine. But what's the best way to dry off a wet umbrella? You just open it inside and leave it. Do you do it real fast though? Maybe maybe the ghost just blinks in and out as you're like shaking. Oh, no, I leave it. I leave it all night. Oh, okay. I'm with you. Yeah. All right. Um. So then the seventh one is our old pal the Ouija board, and the, and the, we break. Uh, from the book because now it's time to have a, a seance with the Ouija board. Yep. And so they're moving this glass around and then a mist starts to show up but uh, then they look over and there's a creepy old lady and everybody screams but it turns out it's just Hairdo's mother. <laughs> See, you are so spot on with keeping the movie like this keeping the movie in this house and just doing these stories that they were telling each other and, and making it that an- anthology format. I think this had potential of being really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it gives you an excuse to be a tonal the way that this movie is the problem like is jazz. yeah yeah like because then you can be like oh but like have one character probably teddy that's kind of the idiot who every time you get around to teddy telling a story it's just something stupid and silly and it's sort of the palate cleanser and then you do the other stories that are a little more serious and spooky and stuff like that and uh you know look we leave it to richard and i to fix any movie <laughs> just not the i2 right 
Yeah, the I2 is, in its own way, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's misshapen, and it's not perfect, but I love it. Uh, Lopsided, like a, like a pregnant lady. Yeah, <laughs> who is about to give birth to her lover's wife via reincarnation and that's just how ghosts work that's what that's what that movie teaches you is that every every baby is just uh a dead person that wants to forget about how shitty their life was (laughs) sounds fair yeah i mean honestly i'm looking for a way out now um so no not really anyway (laughs) i don't want to worry anyone then uh this is my favorite thing because this uh, number eight is the late dinner bell at a crossroads thing where you go to a crossroads, which are naturally conducive to seeing spirits, Richard. And then you just tap on a, a bowl of rice or something and basically ring in the dinner bell and hungry ghosts will come. And there's this whole bit where they're like banging on the bowls and ghosts are starting to appear. There's one girl, April, who doesn't ever see one, but like one dude, uh, I think it's Teddy breaks his bowl. So he starts using his teeth so that the ghosts <laughs> don't eat them or something. Uh, and I, I call this the Jack off game because they keep showing everybody from just the, the chest up. And their arms like furiously doing something. <laughs> right. They, you, you needed like a hand check. Everybody. <laughs> hands above the table. <laughs> and then a, a whole gaggle of uh, freaking ghosts show up. Yeah. And the the disappointing part about this whole scene for me. Because I think it's kind of neat and, and, and just interesting. And it's when they look up and there's a lady ghost just descending from above them, drooling on hairdo. (laughs) And then they all like, Uh, you know, give it a zoinks and just take off running. And then that's it. And that's the whole scene. Like there's no, it kind of builds to nothing, which is uh, unfortunately kind of the story of this movie, I think. Yep. Uh, so, but a- uh, April still hasn't seen a ghost. So she says, Hey, we've only gotten to, to number nine. What's number nine. And they're like, well, obviously it's black cat hide and seek, which is where you play hide and seek, but the <laughs> brave, uh, you know, like searcher in this case has to keep hold of a cat tightly, (laughs) which has never worked out badly in the history of cat ownership. I mean, my cat is black and she is sleeping next to me. So I'm sort of playing low key black cat hide and seek right now. That's pretty cool. But if you took that cat out into the woods, Richard, (laughs) And and then wrapped your arms tight around it. Uh, that cat is going to just chew your jugular through. And so, but that's what you got to do. The idea is that if you go play a hide and seek at night with this black cat, uh, that a ghost will hide somebody. And so what you do is you let the black cat go and the black cat will find not only the person who is hiding, but the ghost that is hiding them. And so this is what they do, and they let. Uh, this is the scene that you referenced earlier, where this dude Kofi is his name, is uh, taking a piss on a tree, and it turns out he's pissing on a little kid ghost, <laughs> and the little kid ghost is like, "Hey, asshole!" And uh, so he hides Kofi from everybody, and then when they release the cat, they find the cat later, but there's still no Kofi. And so cut to the next day when they're just like police are beating the brush to find this dude. It's, it's nuts, man. Like it it takes a turn here that I was like, 
w- wait, what's happening now? <laughs> we went to Thailand and we lost our friend. Yeah, yeah. And uh, meanwhile, Hairdo's mom is like, you guys need to get the fuck back to Hong Kong because the police might be setting you up here and you've got no way to defend yourselves. So this ain't Hong Kong. This is Thailand. Like, some shit could happen to you here. And so uh, Teddy and May decide to go back to Hong Kong, but Hairdo and April stay behind. And April decides she's going to do the grave dirt eye thing, which which she does. And it's not really that great a scene, unfortunately. It seems cooler than, like, on paper, this should be a really good scare scene. Exactly. Um, atmospheric and, like, spooky, and then it doesn't happen. Yeah, and she kind of rubs dirt on her eyes and then her eyeballs kind of fall out and then they're like you're okay and she's like i'm okay and uh the mother hairdo's mom is like you dumb shits like don't let her open her eyes because if if she opens her eyes with grave dirt on her face the ghost will get in and then we're all fucked so (laughs) they have to clean her up hose her down and the medium, the the mother, it turns out, is a spiritual medium, and she says, "Look, I I know how this goes. Like you, you almost got trapped in the spirit world because when I was a little girl, I saw the beginning of this movie, and <laughs> so that's how she got, <laughs> you know, hit." To I the, missed, I missed the, that connection. Yeah, where that's she said that. Yeah. Oh, brother. That's what the whole beginning of the movie was. Was her scene this you know this woman who uh trafficked with spirits and ended up trapped in the spirit world and i guess her body just got used you know to as a suit for the other spirits and whatnot and um anyway so uh like i said may and 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 teddy fuck off back to hong kong uh there's a a sequence with may in in uh, a subway tunnel seeing this floating umbrella uh and and it turns out that it's a ghost what is carrying an umbrella yeah i i liked that part that that one that that particular sequence worked for me mm-hmm. it's it it a little bit of a lifeline yeah every now and again there's something kind of interesting will happen and it's a pretty good scene it doesn't really come to anything much like everything in this movie which is a bummer, but like she sees the ghost and then her umbrella pops open and then, you know, she's on on her way home, uh, where she's terrorized by a haunted basketball that follows her from the bus. She takes back to her apartment. That's terrifying, dude. And, uh, it's the ghost of Kareem (laughs) Abdul-Jabbar. It's the ghost of Larry Bird. The, The ghost of Curly Neal. Wait, is Larry Bird still alive? Probably. Thank God. We don't know anything about sports, I think, is Protect the real him. takeaway. Uh, Larry Bird is the football, right? Yeah, look out for his balls. <laughs> Score a goal unit point. <laughs> City name sports team. <laughs> so, uh, the ladies in your town are the prettiest ladies in the world. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> it's an old kids in the hole. Bit. oh my god i haven't thought of that in years um i like the ladies <laughs> it's the um kevin mcdonald is the kid in the hall we don't like it's him pitching himself to the audience oh my god so good oh uh, man what a wonderful show that was um oh so yeah may may gets home after being chased by this basketball uh, which she finally looks between her legs and sees a ghost basketball player. So I guess that's good. Oh, At brother. least we know what's up. Um, meanwhile, back in in uh, Thailand, Hairdo and his mom figure out that this uh, the bookseller did, honest to goodness, put a curse on him. And again, nothing really comes of that except I guess that sort of informs the end of the movie but it feels like it should be a bigger deal yeah who is this guy why did he do that right and is it just because he looked at the back of the book is that where the curse kicked in 
And that seems like a harsh penalty to pay for yeah. just discovering that you've been had, you know? Anyway. Yeah, you, have to, you have to kill everyone that finds out you're a bad businessman. Right, that you're in like an immoral business, like a... <laughs> Yeah, just a, an unethical bookseller. I think that's fine. I think that's all the punishment that you need. Um, you got one over on them. Anyway, I, I don't think the punishment fits the crime here is what I'm saying. No. Uh, so they, yeah, so they figure out that there's this curse. April uh, brushes her hair at midnight as if to see uh, Kofi. And we don't really see the end of that, but it's clear because we've seen iMovies movies before that's like ah i bet that's going to come back that there's always a twist in these fucking movies uh and i think i know what this one is um mm -hmm. so teddy uh k ruxpin is on the elevator with a bunch of burn victims on his way to go see may who is freaked out about the basketball ghost and one of my favorite moments of this movie, kind of the, the meta moment of the film. Oh, here it comes. Oh, yeah. Uh, where this creepy kid is like on the stairwell as Teddy is running away. Uh, and he says, hey, mister, can you, what is it? Can you help me find my report card? My mom will be mad if I don't yes. find it. And you're like, yes. oh, it's the ghost from the other movie. And Teddy also thinking it's the ghost from the other movie fucking like cream <laughs> kicks this kid in the chest <laughs> who it turns out is totally a real kid holy shit turns out not a ghost and this kid flies against the wall oh. and is like Clutching hey his chest. yeah it's <laughs> it's kind of wonderful now bo i am not an expert uh -huh. but i am i am an enthusiast of the films of Stephen Chow. I have seen like 30 or so Stephen Chow movies. Yeah, sure. Uh, for, for folks who don't know, Stephen Chow. Journey of the is, West. He's, Kung Fu. Yes, he's, uh, he's now a director. Yeah. yeah, he's now a director, but he used to be a, a wonderful comedic actor. And I'm always hoping just for fun, he'll come back and start uh, acting again. Because I love him, him on film. But this moment with the kid is such a chow moment. This is such a great Hong Kong uh, physical, brutally cruel uh, comedy joke. Yeah, <laughs> I that's, loved it. Yes, it is. It's hurting a child, and Stephen Chow loves to do that in his movies too. Yes, um, or pig people. Take your pick. Uh, but yeah, it's very funny. Um, and, and it sold well. It's a, it's a well done moment of the film. Um, and anyway, so Teddy, uh, gets up to the floor where May lives. He talks some shit to the basketball ghost. And then as if to wash away the good feelings that you might've had from this karate kick in the stairwell, we are treated to the, I would argue the dumbest scene of the movie. Mm hmm my Wait, favorite scene is it really oh yeah oh man i was this was the point where i was like <laughs> when did Shaun of the dead come out <laughs> do we have to finish this and <laughs> and what happens is uh you describe it you're the fan well okay so he gets possessed and he loses control of his body not his bowels this time but it's making him do these creepy, skeletal, crunchy, kind of like um, really like uh, spastic movements. And these two hip hop kids uh, are walking down the hall at the same time in this creepy apartment complex. And they see him and they immediately assume he's doing the break dancing. Uh huh. And so it's a challenge. One... Not only is yes. he break dancing, he's challenging them. What's it called? The step off movies? Step up? Uh, step up on it. <laughs> and so the, the nerdy one who can't dance is <laughs> challenges or uh, goads his, uh, his buddy, who is the real break dancer of the pair, to take this guy on. And they have a break dance battle. <laughs> and all the old people 
in every apartment come peeking their heads out to watch and it turns into this whole thing of just this nightmare inducing garbage scene it's, lo- it's joyous to my eyes i loved it it's so dumb <laughs> <laughs> and you're like you've described it perfectly. This culminates in you know them going back and forth as you said people are coming out of their their rooms, their homes to witness this thing happen. And then Teddy walks up the wall and stands on the ceiling <laughs> and turns around and faces them and then everybody is like fuck this and then runs off. Uh which rightfully so. That is the proper reaction of that. And uh anyway then he kind of comes to he falls and comes to and there is the girl from the bus at the beginning of of the movie and he grabs her and she's like how did i get here and he's like don't worry about it come you know come with me and he takes her into may's house and uh it turns out richard that it was she who was the one who died that day. She's been a ghost all along. Yeah, I, my notes tell it says girl on bus was ghost. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. That's right. And uh, yeah, because May is like, do you see her right now? And there's the gag where he looks between his legs and sees her there and he screams and everything. It's all very stupid and coming on the heels of this dancey. You're just like, I can't, I can't take any of this seriously. How are, how dare you try to scare me after that scene? I need like, I need a scene where just people go to a restaurant and sit around and talk before you try to scare me again. You gotta, you gotta reset the table. I can't, you're it's, I, it, the it's whiplash inducing the this uh this change between comedy and a scare um anyway they uh they realize oh shit we're fucked we're haunted by ghosts we can't get away from this thing we got to go back to thailand and try to get hairdo's mom to fix us up because on account of being cursed real good and so they do they they go back to uh, uh, Thailand after. Um, oh, by the way, the the bus ghost sees video of herself and then realizes that she's dead. I guess, and then goes into a white light again. As makes as much sense as anything else in this movie. Yeah, she she's very narcissistic. Yeah, right. She she reaches nirvana by realizing I really was pretty hot. <laughs> I look good on camera, even as a ghost. I mean, as a corpse. <laughs> you know what? I It's a shame that we can't send this to Hollywood, because I think I could have gotten some parts before I was just parts. <laughs> Remember me. Remember how hot I was. <laughs> right. Remember my perfect breasts. Um. Anyway. <laughs> None of that happens. Probably would have been a better movie. Um, yeah. We we do go back to uh, Thailand, where we now investigate number 10 on the list of ways to contact the dead, which is called The Last Frontier. And which is you have to dress up in funeral clothes and lie down like the dead and fall asleep. Yeah, why not? I, I mean, I'm just making sure I have that right. That's what my notes say. Yeah, you got to uh, kind of fit in. Got to fit in with the corpses wearing those used funeral clothes you got out of the coffin. It's a fake it till you make it for dead people. <laughs> why do I have imposter syndrome for corpses? They're going to find out I've never been dead at all. <laughs> <laughs> so may and teddy uh teddy is like hey i can't fall asleep and may just decks him and knocks him out which i i like uh, i appreciated that as well yeah anytime they like teddy needed to get hit more in this movie quite frankly <laughs> that would have been uh, also made it a better film um but they go into the further from there where they are surrounded by further ghosts and this is where we take a turn into the hard stupid 
because they're bad breath question mark oh man or just their living breath or something keeps the ghosts that are surrounding them away this is relevant to the pandemic (laughs) you gotta wear your mask and you're like whoa what is that stench and you're like oh that's me i'm repulsed by my own breath i'm a ghost what i like to do is soak my uh my cloth mask in uh in listerine <laughs> so that while i may get some stench outside the mask everybody thinks it's all just you know roses and petunias see see my my mask is just a bag full of spray paint that's a great idea <laughs> that's like when i came up with, with the idea of giving up sacrifice for lint <laughs> See, these are money making ideas uh, here. Uh huh. As Sean Penn said in uh, Dead Man Walking, looking for a loophole. Anyway, I, don't, I didn't even know he was in that. <laughs> yeah, he the the Susan Sarandon movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, he Dead Man awesome. Walking. Yeah, well, I was thinking, thinking of Dead it? Man with Johnny Depp. No, that's a yes. He, I don't think he is in that. No, he's not. Somebody help me. I'm in the I three forever. <laughs> so anyway, we're just avoiding what's coming next, which is they get winded or something where they're like, boy, all this breathing is tough <laughs> and I just can't do it anymore. And so Teddy, of course, decides to squeeze out a fart because <laughs> hand to God people. <laughs> This is not a Noboru Iguchi movie. Mm. This is not your uh, zombie ass splatter undeads. <laughs> which is where you would expect to find this kind of fart humor. Oh my god. But, you know, that's a movie that at least tells you right up front, eh, going to be a lot of farting in this movie. Uh, <laughs> this snuck it in on you. All of a sudden, we're farting to keep the ghosts away. And then to get us out of this nightmare, Kofi just shows up from behind this ghost kid. And he's like, hey, what are you guys doing here? I've only been gone an hour. And they're like, motherfucker, you've been gone a month. We're in the spirit world because of you. And then some ghosts start to surround him again. And they're like, hey, Kofi, you just got to breathe at these guys. And then if you run out of breath, you just fart on them. And then, I, again, oh yeah, hey, let's, if it worked the first time, let's just have another character show up. Here comes April out of nowhere, and she's like, oh, hey, I'm here too. Let's get away from all these ghosts. And so uh, they run to a clearing, and one of the, the gimmicks of this is that you got to, uh, you know, on, Hairdo and his mom are like ringing bells and lighting incense. And they're like, hey, at a certain point, we're going to ring these bells and you're going to see a light. And you got to get your ass out of the spirit world or you can get stuck there. And they're like, yeah, 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 we got you. Klaatu Verona Nick too. Got it. And uh, so they they get to this clearing and they're about to go back. But April is like, I don't see any light. What are you guys talking about? Oh no, April, no. Right. And they're like, April, god damn it, you didn't see a ghost the first time and you got Kofi lost. And now you're not seeing the white light this time. Oh, you killed yourself. That's what happened. And so oh, it god. we we get the flashback where the night uh that she did the combing her hair at midnight, she ended up uh cutting her wrists on account of losing Kofi. Not worth it. I'm just going to go ahead and say, not worth it. Also, it uh, feels like something that Hairdo would have known. Like, I know he says, like, oh, April's missing, too. But it's like, where did she do this? Where is she staying? She didn't live in Thailand, right? Like, she was staying there. And they don't have her motel number? Anyway, uh, I I just have some practical problems with the further uh, uh, section of this film. But anyway, they they stick around and just jabber jaw with April for a while about whether or not they should stay or go. And Kofi is like, 
I'm going to stay here in the ghost world with my girlfriend. I guess that means I'm dead now. Yeah, why not? Or something. I wonder if he just ages in the spirit world until he dies and then becomes an old ghost. It reminds me of uh, Idle Hands, where they they were too lazy to go into the light. (laughs) Right, yeah. Like, like, ah, fuck it, it was really far. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a real, like, uh, where do we have to go? 30 feet over there into the light? (laughs) Ugh. I think I'm just going to stay here with April. She's she's got the kind of give up spirit I can get behind. <laughs> and so, so, sorry to all the suicides out there. Um, then it's they're a big demographic for us. I don't want to alienate uh, that that listenership. Um, of so then Teddy and May decide they're going to bounce again. And they they wake up in their funeral clothes and all that stuff, and they nobody's around, so they open up the doors of this bedroom where they were they were in, uh, and it's the hallway of May's apartment building, and we now see the dancers uh, from earlier in the movie, uh, kind of playing European football with the basketball. And they're like, the fuck? How did we get here? What's going on? And then the kids uh, accidentally knock the basketball towards them, and they run through Teddy and May on account of them now being spirits. Whoa! You stay too long. You fucked around and talked to April for ten minutes while the white light was was going on, and they were ringing bells to beat the band. What did you think was going to happen? They told you not to fuck around, and you fucked around. Sorry, I feel like this is one of those cases where the punishment does fit the crime. Yeah, nobody nobody was smart enough to escape their much-deserved fate. <laughs> right, all you had to do was as soon as you ring the bell, like when April was like, oh no, it turns out I've been dead all along. Like, oh, that sucks. See ya, April. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's uh, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Right, take it sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gone man you're out of there uh anyway so richard we we get that ending and then we cut over to hairdo's place where the mother is standing over their still sleeping bodies and it's just like yep that curse was something all right we just could never overcome it Thanks, Mom? Uh, she's supportive? I mean, she's a realist, I guess, of like, yeah, they were fucked. I mean, we told them, and she did earlier in the movie. She was like, you guys keep fucking around with this black magic. You're never going to get out from under it. Like, it's going to kill you. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. She's the only character in the movie that is sensible. Uh, hey, there's, which, there's a reason she's old. She's right? smart. Yeah. Old people are smart. They know how to dodge a curse. Like, that's the reason I'm getting up there. You know? (laughs) When somebody's like, don't open the back page of this book, I'm like, you got it. I'm throwing the book away. I'm not even going to buy it. I don't want a curse book. I'm stapling it closed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I glued all the pages shut. Now no one can look at it. I I gave it to a teenage boy since it was full of dirty pictures. Oh. Those, well, that'll do it. Those pages won't ever come apart again. Oh, uh, see, I thought you were trying to get him to look, but no, you know, yeah, no, it's more about the seal it, yeah. spackling it shut <laughs> <laughs> on account of masturbation. It, yes. The joke wasn't entirely clear. I'll grant you that it was. It was more fully realized than ninety nine percent of the jokes in this movie. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I and it's like more it. specific. I, I would argue. Um, yes. So, yeah, so mom says, well, they were fucked all along. And then we cut to our bookseller who is selling another copy of the book that we saw him, you know, making earlier uh, to somebody else. What, you know, he was like, how much is it? And he's like, it's about 500. Give it to give me money. Uh, and also your curse now. 
Um, and I just don't know what his game is. Like, I don't know what the, the end game of our bookseller is other than to just curse as many random people as he can, I suppose. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, it's, a uh, ancient Chinese word as Dick weed. <laughs> Some people just want to curse the world. Master Wayne. <laughs> Tangerine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really something. Uh, so that's the end of the movie. Um, that is 75% of the I films, but before we, we leave the I three Richard, uh, I got a couple of things to ask you. The first is, uh, what do you think about this movie? Where would you place it in the, the sequence of I films where as a, as third eyes go, yeah, how distracting and off putting is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, be- I liked it better than two. I really, really struggled with the second one. Okay. Um, this just because they threw all of the uh, good ideas out the window and brought their ten shitty ideas to the table and made them zany. I was uh, caught off guard in a in a pleasant way because I'm such a sucker for for Hong Kong comedy, but. Yeah, this is bad. I mean, this is wildly bad and not even like funny bad. It was just, I got through it and I was, I had a good time with it. And I definitely would never recommend this movie to anybody. <laughs> like, it's, I, I just, I, I, I didn't hate it. I really, really watched it for real. Yeah. I watched it twice. I, you know, I did my notes pass oh, and I did oh, my, I'm my first sorry. pass. And yeah. by the time I did the notes pass, I was like, I'm done with this. I don't, <laughs> I, you know, I got through the second one. I, I felt the same way at the end of my second viewing of, of the I2 as I did the, the first viewing. I liked the I3 markedly less on a second viewing mm-hmm. when I was really paying attention to it and really like how does this all fit together and where is the story and what am i missing and i it turns out i i don't believe i'm missing anything it's just really sloppy filmmaking and and as goofy as it is and it as like there's a spirit of anarchy to it that i do kind of respect it's like the second one isn't great by any stretch but it's got a couple of good scare moments in it and that moment where the lead character declares that her unborn baby is going to be the lover's ex-wife i thought was hysterically funny that just it's one of those moments when you're watching a movie that sticks with you where you're like that i will never forget how hard i laughed when that line came up on the screen that yeah there there definitely wasn't enough of that in this where, because I think that was supposed to be serious in part two, right? That yes. And that's what made okay. it so hysterically funny is that no, nobody, <laughs> nobody thought that was a joke and it was delivered with, you know, that sort of Leslie Nielsen seriousness, which is because it's up such an absurd line. That's what made it kind of wonderful. And, you know, like, I think if this movie, had as we talked about if it had just been an anthology film and they were just like hey we're gonna have a good time with the i series this is gonna be our halloween three of the i movies where we just we're gonna do something different it's gonna be a little bit off the wall and i guess in a sense they do do that i think where they get in trouble is trying to make a real plot out of it as opposed to just letting it be a series of vignettes that i think would have worked because there's so many freaking uh, Hong Kong horror anthology films. Like, there's a ton. So you'd think that maybe they'd get the hint, or I guess they they were sick of that, so they thought, oh, we could tile this together. This will all go together great. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to hear the two of them talk about the inspiration and be honest about it. You know, like not just the, well, we had, you know, 
we didn't want to do one in, unless we knew the story was right. I don't want any of that shit. I want the, you know, somebody was going to make one. And we figured it might as well be us because we had a notebook full of random shit. And we thought we could turn it into a movie. And it turns out we couldn't. Because I feel like that's the real story. That's the uh, the E, true Hollywood story of the I-3. Yes, if I were writing the docudrama about the making of the I-3, that is, that's how it would go. And the story would ultimately be a tragic story of filmmakers who had lost their passion and... And and never quite recapture it again oh, until they do recycle. Um. So Richard, any final thoughts on the i three? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, really, just. I mean, what the hell is the child's eye going to be? I don't like, know. I, I am so not looking up anything, and I just like I did with this film. I'm going into it completely cold other than I have the DVD. That's mm-hmm. that's the only information I know about it. Yeah, I'm very excited to watch this. Uh I I'm I'm in the same boat. I've been kind of, you know, like I have these movies set in order because I have a list of shows that I am watching stuff for and uh and and The Child's Eye is I've got one more movie to watch and then that's on the plate and I'm kind of excited just because I feel like maybe the, like I, I'm just curious to see what it is. Like how do you, what do you do after this? Um, I'm surprised there aren't more of these movies. Yeah. 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 Or did they just like, was this the, the high water mark in terms of zaniness and weirdness? Like this was their Jason X and, <laughs> yes. and then they just had to back away from it forever. I don't know. We'll see. I hope the child's eye is the story of the kid in the stairwell. Who's on a path of vengeance <laughs> after being kicked in the fucking chest <laughs> by this stranger. And he just old boy, somebody that's oh, kind of secretly boy. what I hope it is. Hey, we had a a scene where a ghost kid got peed on and a, a living kid got kicked in the chest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, we came and, away and, with that. And we still can't recommend this movie. How <laughs> fucked up is that? That's the real measure of this film, is that both Bless of those things heart, are true. Hang bros. Yeah. So, anyway, in a, in a slight programming note, uh, for those interested in what's coming next on... Uh, hero hero go show we will be doing of course the child's eye will be in two weeks time um after that there's going to be a brief pause between series uh and because somebody mentioned uh sion sono's tag and i was like you know what that's a great idea as soon as i finish child's eye have a little bit of uh an aperitif if you will uh, that's a look at, at Sion Sono's tag. And then I think we're going to jump right back into a, another series um, with uh, with a, a co-host or guest yet to be determined. But I think uh, next on the plate is one missed call. I think it's time to do those movies. Nice. Yeah, Very right. Nice. So, uh, Richard. <laughs> Speaking of uh, yeah. child abuse. <laughs> Speaking of uh, kicking a child in the chest, (laughs) Richard, where can people find you if they would like a kick in the chest? (laughs) Well, uh, hello, this is the Doomed Show is here on legionpodcast.com. Also find us at hellodoomedshow.podomatic.com. That's on the internet and also Spotify internet. Mm -hmm. Podomatic trouble. Look out. With the podomatic bubble. I want to burst it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, hello, this is the Doom Show. You know I'm a fan. Love, uh, hello. I, I yeah, Recently, uh, as you hear this episode, the most recent uh, show was on Gotcha. <laughs> oh, brother. Which was a terrific conversation. Like, that is such a a weird offbeat movie. And it's it, it's a strange movie for you guys to cover, which, which you discussed. But it's such a a weirdly appropriate movie as well 
just because of its kind of offbeat nature and the strangeness of it. Oh yeah. And and like I, I told you in the in the social media chats, um when you guys mentioned hiding out, I was like, I really fucking need to watch Hiding Out again. I watched that movie a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, full credit goes to my pal Scott over at uh, eurocultav.com. He uh he's like, "Hey, gotcha, got a Blu-ray." And I'm like, "All right. Would you like to do that?" He's like, "Oh yeah." So we did Gotcha. And that's the thing, on Doom Show, we've done so few comedies. We've done a few horror comedies, but the the only straight up comedy we did was uh the face with two left feet, uh-huh. which was the uh, they the this guy in Italy looked like John Travolta, and so he got paid impersonating John Travolta, and then <laughs> they made a movie about him impersonating John Travolta, and it's a masterpiece. Hey, it looked like John Travolta over here. <laughs> oh my gosh! So they they that kind of <laughs> ruined all other comedies for us because we couldn't top that, even if we did Teen Witch where we'd sing top that yeah but uh no scott brought the gotcha and it was a lot of fun it was it was one of those things where we ran out of movie to talk about and then we just started talking about video games <laughs> yeah it's a it was a really fun episode it was a it, it was a kind of a front to back real winner so uh like i said i'm, I'm a big fan everybody ought to li- be listening to hello this is the doom show um and more people are all the time eventually eventually everyone is just gonna know way more cameron mitchell information than they ever thought oh boy they they needed the unofficial or maybe official mascot of the show at this point it's hard oh, to we say we got away from his movies we got to get back to the cam he's yeah. so sweaty he's waiting for us <laughs> he's always waiting he's like the dark side he's like tales from the dark side he's he's always there waiting <laughs> sweating as um, he said in uh without warning hubba bubba boy let's hop to it man that movie is also like we uh, we could talk about without warning all night um oh yeah martin landau is a national treasure as, as ever um as as the crazy old man fighting the aliens boy that that's a fucking weirdo movie uh nice. but you can hear more about stuff like that on hello this is the doom show um for those of you listening here uh to hero hero go show uh, of course, if you would uh, subscribe on the pod, uh, podcast platform of your choice, um, if you can rate and review, uh, that is always helpful. And, uh, you know, the best thing you could do if you're enjoying the show and someone is interested in in Asian horror movies with a decidedly silly spin, uh, you know, hey, here we are. Tell them tell them we're here waiting for them like a sweaty Cameron Mitchell. Yes. Uh, wait, waits we're for us holding- all. We're holding in our farts so that we don't scare the ghosts away. I've I've never farted because of that, Richard. <laughs> I've never breathed. Wow. That's commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on that note, we're going to get Richard some medical attention. And also maybe an exorcist. It's tough to say. We're going to see if this is necromancy. And uh, and we'll be back in two weeks' time with the child's eye. Thanks everyone for listening, and uh, and we'll see you then. Good night. Bye, folks.